Hi, my name is Gamer Carlson. I'm here today. It's quite late, but we're having a lot of fun uh, at uh, the post Segoy Con 2010. And I'm here with the lovely and talented Jan Scott Fraser. Hi, everybody. So we're going to do this off the cuff, but uh, one question I do remember off the top of my head was Jan, you've worked with Anime Location several times. What is one of your favorite things to do when you work with us? See, um, everyone at Anime and Location, except me, of course, is really professional at what they do. I mean, they, you do great interviews, you know, really well thought out questions, you know, interesting, good, uh, good uh, production, you know, really take care of things. So I think what my, not just my need, but my destiny is to make it as chaotic as possible. I have to add that element of screaming chaos and weirdness. Because I interview people upside down, you know, and in bed, and I ask them questions that, you know, I, I ask these people questions, voice actors and various producers and stuff, that you will never see. <laughs> Unfortunately, I would, no. if it was up to me, you would. It, it's true, you will never see those questions. You should, because they're awesome. And that's why I ask them for you. Man from Anime on Location. What's your website? Anime uh, www.animeonlocation.tv. It's all one word and then .tv. Okay, go to that place on the on the in the interweb and demand that you see the the weird footage that they will not show you. <laughs> because 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 OhioCon 2010 with Mike Sicker Nicholas was completely insane. And and Jan over here is one of the best interviewers of themselves. From other conventions. That's true. I forgot. I, I, at Sugoi Con, uh, no, it wasn't my last year. I think it was the year before. I, uh, I interviewed myself in the at my table in the in yeah. the uh, dealer's room. Dealer's room, room. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, that was the same year I wore the Joker makeup. I think. <laughs> so uh, one other question that I do remember is, uh, I'm very new to all of this. Mm -hmm. um, my first convention doing this was. Uh, Ohio Country 2010, so I was thrown in the fire pan too. Uh, do you have any suggestions for what I should do a little bit better to improve myself uh, on camera for you? Well, I think I think that my most the most important suggestion is to relax. I mean, just let it go. You know, remember that things can change, edit it, and all that stuff. But you know, also people are interested in really candid things, um, things that they otherwise would not see. Because you know, you can. I mean, this granted, this goes back to interview questions, but you can ask the same question. I mean, when voice actors or whoever, directors, people like me, when they get asked the same question over and over, the answer starts to become, it stops becoming real and starts becoming a performance. It's just this thing. And so asking questions that are a little bit off of that make a big difference. And also, you seem to be, you're a pretty comfortable person to sit with. You're not all, like, crazy or anything, so that's good. Well, um... Yeah, and I think that, you know, you just, you know, don't take it too seriously. Don't worry about people. I mean, they're, everyone's a human being. That makes a big difference. And I think the other major point of advice on how to uh, work with anime and location is uh, be afraid. Be very afraid. I like your answers. Uh, <laughs> so um, now this is your, uh, you've been doing conventions for a long time. And uh, you've been all over the world and all over the U.S. Um, what was maybe one of those weird one-time things that you're like, I this is going to stick in my head, going to a convention, you know, um, not like a convention that really stuck with you. It may have been like that small one or that big one, you know, something of something of that nature, something that was really profound, and you were, you know, something about the the, art, the artist alley or the the guests, you know, something like that. Um. The one that comes immediately to mind, I mean, I've been to so many amazing conventions, so many, and, and every convention I've been to, there's been something awesome about it, you know, there's always, with me, whenever I do a convention, uh, like Spalding Gray, I have to have my perfect moment, there's this, there's this one moment of the convention that, that I will never forget, um, so I have those for all of them, but you know, when you mentioned that, the one that came immediately to mind was um, the first Kamikaze Con, and I think that would have been in 2005, and I, that was, that weekend, I had, was my birthday, and it was a birthday with a zero in it. So, a zero birthday. Those are the ones that are very difficult to deal with. And this was a, a, an important one for me, uh, turning 20 again. Um, <laughs> Now this was really important for me, but you know I had the most amazing weekend. They gave me this amazing suite, and I went on my birthday and I got this tattoo, 
this one right here. I got this tattoo. And so, you know, whenever I think about anime, whatever I do in the future, wherever I go, whatever I am, as long as I still have my right arm, please keep it on me. Um, I'll always remember not just you know what the meaning of my tattoo is, but I'll always remember anime. I'll remember that great weekend. I'll remember many great weekends. So um, I think about that con because um, I met a really, really, really close friend of mine there, um, and I got my tattoo, and I got to hang out with the people I love, you know. And I mean, granted, I get to hang out with people I love at a number of cons, but uh, that's the that's the one that just popped in my mind. And then the other one would, of course, have been my very first anime con, Anime Expo 1993. 1993. Um, it was like one of two cons that existed in the world, uh, anime that is. And um, I was brought to um, uh, Expo and San Diego Comic Con that year, and that just blew my mind. I had no idea about and the state of anime in the U.S. because I had moved there in '87, and uh, that was awesome. I mean, I was—I remember we got on the elevator. We were uh, the con chair, and I were coming down from the top floor, which is where the, the guest suite was. And a guy handed him a piece of paper right before we got in the or right before the doors closed. And he looked and he said, "We broke a thousand people." I'm like, "There's a thousand anime fans in the U.S. <laughs> and now how many people were here? Yeah, it's I don't know, thousands and thousands." This this one probably hit close to two on a, on a rough estimate. Really? Yeah, so a rough estimate. They ran out of badges on Friday. And uh, that's why the registration. That that would make me think like three or three three thousand five hundred or so. I'm not sure. Yeah, we, we don't know. We don't know the numbers. We're just guesstimating from our personal experiences. Yeah, the feel of it was about three. But uh, you know, and I thought, oh my god, there are a thousand anime fans in the United States. That blew my mind. Of course, there were many more, and I didn't have access to the internet at that time. But you know, so that was awesome. Um, just this year, I went to a con in Thunder Bay, Ontario. That was so much fun. I had never, I mean, I've been to Canada a number of times, but I've never been up there. And so whenever I get to go somewhere new and different, I mean, whatever it is. I mean, I got to go to Detroit last year. I'd never been to Detroit. And anywhere that's new, I am about. And in um, not this upcoming weekend, but the following weekend, I'm, I'm very excited to go for the very first time to Edinburgh, Scotland. Oh. That's very exciting. Yeah, I uh, um, I did not know that they had one out there, so that's TV. really nice. Okinawa 10 of 2010. Um, it's awesome. It's it's a great show. I've been there uh, twice before. They're every other year, and they were in Glasgow for the last two, and um, so now I get to see Edinburgh. We're really close to the castle, so I'm very excited. All right. Um, so uh, as we've mentioned with the other lovely members that were here with us earlier, uh, we mentioned uh, Voices, uh, Voices 4. And uh, you've been a very critical key component to that. Um, <laughs> so they tell me. <laughs> but you've been a very key component to it. And um, I, I would like to thank you for your work for it uh, personally. Um, I've greatly enjoyed uh, that, that last show. That was amazing show. Um, I don't think I've ever – I've heard a lot of cover bands. But to know that these are people that are just doing this for fun, for the, for the benefit of others – <laughs> that was amazing. So, um, what would you say as one of your last, your last one? What was that? You know, is there any feelings or something you want to get across to everybody? Well, um, I, d I do want to make one point here, and that Voices for as a, as a corporation, as, as a company itself, as an organization itself, is not coming apart. We just we came to this place of it takes a lot of effort and time and schedule and people and and resources and stuff to do one of our concerts because we have a number of you know we have we'll have Greg Ayers and Chris Ayers and Carly and Brittany and a number of other people singing so you know we require that and of course the band and we got to get everyone out so it's a very it was a very huge undertaking and you know we've been doing it for five awesome years and we finally got to the place where it was just I don't know I won't say it was too much but you know things need to move on and uh, but the co the organization itself is still around. I mean, we're we're going to be doing some other things as well. I mean, right now we're on a little bit of hiatus. We're still selling CDs. You can buy Voices for Peace at CDBaby.com. Oh, you can buy Voices for Tolerance on CDBaby.com. Uh, CDBaby.com. Their download and iTunes. And you can also go to our website, Voices for that's F O R, not the number four. At voices for dot org, and you can dot com. We're there too. Um, so we're still doing that, and as for the performances, I I, I must admit that there's I, I'm really gonna miss this. I really love doing it for both, you know the uh, you know um, building sales, but I also you know working with my friends is was so amazing. I and and you know I, one of the things when I started this is 
so many fans are like, I love you, voice actor X, I love you, you're doing, you know, you're everything. And, but they never saw the other sides of those people. They never saw it because most of the people who are voice actors worked in stage and they've done musicals and all this. And some of that comes out in anime, but of course characters are defined outside of the actors. The actors don't define those characters. So this is them. This is that person giving their performance of something that, you know, they know and, and, the, and the folks in the audience know. And that was very exciting to me. That's always been exciting to me. And of course, there's this little, little selfish part of me that's like, I got to be a rock star for five years. Five years. That was very exciting. And I went from abject, I had no idea what was going on. Absolutely terrible. I never thought I'd be on stage. That was never part of the original deal. In fact, I, the, my, me singing was never part of the project. Chris Ayers. Chris Ayers, you made me sing. Look what you did to me. <laughs> um, I, uh, you know, that, uh, I, people dream about that their whole lives. I mean, people dedicate so much time and all, and I fell into it. I, it was something that I resisted, but I fell into this amazing thing that I got to sing and perform, play guitar and keyboard and harmonica and all this. And I just, over these years, I came from abject terror to being really comfortable with it, and I really enjoy it. Um, so I definitely, definitely will miss that. I'm not stopping going to cons. I'll be still around. As you, and you'll see some of the, of course, the voice actors who've worked with us, and of course the folks are doing swag. So, you know, you'll see us around, just not necessarily in a concert. All right. Well, I would like to say thank you so much. You've always been a pleasure to talk to. You're one of the nicest people I think I can ever meet in my entire life. And I've met a lot of people, and I really do mean this. I've, you're always so kind and open and gentle, and that's a, a nice gesture, especially in the chaos and hecticness and all that of going to a convention, working on staff. And you are one of the easiest people to work with when it comes to being on staff because you're just, you're just that sweet. Well, thank you very much. I, yeah. When you're on staff, I try, I, me, I'm, I'm very self-contained because I'm like, I, I'm very independent of things. So if you, things are going on, I'm like, I'm going to go over here and do my thing. So I, I try to be as, I try to be as low impact on conventions as I can. I mean, I need to eat in a room and that stuff, but, you know, generally, I, well, thank you. I, uh, that's really nice of you to say that. It's, it's me. I'm just almost the same way, but you're sweeter. I, I try not to be mean. That's kind of what I do. All right. Well, John. As everyone said, we want you to get really better, really healthy, and um, we want you we want you to back as much as we can. Okay? Absolutely. And